to uh, Salt Package Manager for Orchestrated Development. My name's Dave Neely. Um, I just wanted to tell you about the human condition a little bit this week. It, it's amazing. I got my flu shot a month ago, and uh, everything was great, just fine. Um, then I'm uh, getting ready for my talk this last week, and I'm looking at my son, and he's got you know stuff running down his nose and. <laughs> And wouldn't you know it, today is that day for me, right? Today, today is that day where their congestion just hits you and just it's really rough. So I'm really grateful for uh, modern medicine and a whole lot of water. Um, I'm really excited to give this talk, though. I've been, I've been uh, thinking about it for a long time and, and really excited to give back to the SALT community. Okay, um, I work for Motorola Solutions. We help people be their best in the moments that matter. Um, if you've used a Motorola phone, that's no longer the same Motorola. There's two different Motorolas now, Motorola Solutions and Motorola Mobility. Um, I work for the one that does public safety. I uh, joined as part of Spillman Technologies in 2011. Spillman Technologies is a local Utah company here uh, in West Valley. And I've been doing developer services almost the entire time, so almost six years, seven years of, of developer services. Uh, I put this little icon up here for WLTL. That was my high school radio station. It's my first technology job. I worked as, a, as an engineer. I worked two hours a week uh, DJing on a radio, on live radio, which is really cool. For some reason, this is scarier. I don't know why. But uh, I also put up a couple of pictures. The, the, that's kind of like a before and after picture. That, uh, that picture in the nice suit and tie, that was the picture Mo, uh, Spillman asked us to take last year before we got acquired. You know, the nice, big, professional, look at these guys, they're awesome. And then this was earlier this summer with, with three-month beard on. And, you know, when I, when I, when I met, first met with Motorola, um, the first thing I noticed was that all the guys in the room that were my counterparts all had beards. I was like the only clean-shaven dude in the room. So I was really excited to try that out. And then, uh, you know, I, I gave it up. I made me look really old. Okay. Cool. So today what we're going to talk about is uh, a process, a workflow for using Salt Stack that uh, goes from template all the way through to deploying your package on the Salt Master. Um, the fancy title is orchestrated development, but it really just means using all the tools that you already use and getting stuff done. Okay? Um, so I thought I'd ask, how many people, we'll just go through these, how many people are familiar with cookie cutter? Show of hands. Okay, all right, this will be new for you, it'll be good stuff. Git, no, I don't even need to ask that, right? Uh, at, uh, Bitbucket, wow, that's a lot of people. Uh, Team City, that's the fourth one there, about 40%. Okay, uh, Vagrant, yeah, all right, good. And then Artifactory. Okay, yeah, it's kind of a common tool chain, which is exciting, because then we can talk about the cool stuff. Uh, I'd also like to talk a little bit about theory and why using a tool chain and, and why doing all this stuff is important. I've, I've really enjoyed the DevOps handbook. It's uh, by uh, Jez Humble and Gene Kim and some other guys, Patrick Dubois and John Willis. And uh, it's also kind of a, a successor to a book that they wrote earlier on continuous delivery. And there are several other books, uh, Phoenix Project, just some great books on theory and, and uh, why, why things matter. The DevOps Handbook is great because it gets you talking about, gets you thinking about how you can improve the processes. And my favorite part of it is the ideology at the top of, the, of the, all the detail that's in the book. And that is that there are three important principles uh, to DevOps. One is flow, and that's the flow of changes through your system. Uh, the second one is feedback. Uh, more feedback and better feedback is better. And then the third one is, is experimentation. These, uh, these three things work in a triumvirate of sorts. They, they help each other out. They, you can build on them. You, you need some of one to start doing the others. But, uh, and you can start with any one of the three, really, if you want. And, uh, but, but you really need the three to be successful, okay? So uh, these slides here, these, these thoughts here are important. 
when we come to talking about formulas and how formulas fit into the overall uh, idea of things. And that is that small units of work are easier to test. So when you have a small unit of work, um, you can put that in an automated test and you can just test that that thing works and does its job, right? Same idea as microservices. Automated testing enables opinionated systems. This is where you get systems that are not, not controlled by managers who decide whether something goes into production or not. Uh, a, a system's allowed to be opinionated because usually the way it gets that way is, is um, by committee. You, take a, you have a bunch of people get together and decide these are the rules that we're gonna use to decide whether or not we can publish. You take those and stick those in your system, then you don't publish if your system's broke, right? Um, opinionated systems increase quality, quality improves flow, flow increases confidence, confidence increases feedback, feedback helps you tune your system to, get, to make it better, so it, it informs quality, Confidence and feedback allow for experimentation, and experimentation is where you really win. Everybody wants to do greenfield development. Uh, nobody likes maintaining old systems. So if you can uh, make sure that your systems are stable with the top two, that with uh, flow and feedback, then you can work on experimentation and trying out new things. Okay, so the canonical example for SALT, anywhere you look in the docs, the thing they always want you to do is install Apache. So we're gonna try and follow that pattern. I'm not gonna do awesome at it, but we're gonna try and follow that pattern. As soon as you install Apache once, the next thing you're gonna do is install it again, and again, and you're gonna put a bunch of services behind Apache, typically all these uh, services in our stack you run behind Apache, Team City Artifactory, all that stuff usually runs behind there. So you're gonna need it all the time, right? Okay, so talking about formulas, uh, who in here is not familiar with formulas already? Make sure if I need to talk introduction a little bit. Okay, good. Thank you for being, for being willing. <laughs> okay, salt formulas are the, the small bit of salt code that you can use to deploy a thing, right? We take great things like Apache and Team City and Artifactory, and you take a salt formula to deploy exactly one of those things, and then you, uh, you deploy that and you test it and you put it in a separate repository and all the formula really is is a collection of salt states. You can see here from uh, Tech Hats or maybe the doc department's awesome uh, imagery here that uh, you start out up in the top with your, cool, does this work? Hey, check that out. You start out in the top with your SLS and your pillar file and then you run them into your then you'll take them and run them into your packaging system and your repo system and then eventually to get to your salt master. What a lot of people do is use uh, GitFS, which is fine. Um, I, first time I was at SolveConf, I heard a lot about GitFS and you know, complaints about it's not great. I'm sure it's grown and, and gotten a lot better since then, but I was like, okay, well, hmm, maybe I'll just wait or maybe we'll just throw it all in one big repo and not really worry about it. But what uh, salt formulas let you, let you do is really take your code, small bit of code, apply it in as many different places as you need to, even across different salt masters, and it's really powerful. There's a lot of great resources for them. There's the salt stack formulas repo, uh, sorry, organization on GitHub. There's uh, 277 repositories there and 40 organization members. Anybody can submit repos, uh, usually, I mean formulas, same thing, repo formula, the, the repo holds the formula. And anybody can join and help uh, pitch in and, and update formulas or, or organize them. It's, it's really uh, set up to be well used. There could be a lot more formulas out there than there are. Uh, I know I have some that uh, I'd love to contribute as soon as I can, as soon as I can. It was actually something I was really excited about doing last year and then the acquisition happened and now I have new rules, right? Okay, uh, there's also the formula docs, lengthy documentation. It's great, it's, it's really complete. Uh, sometimes because there's so many things in there, you have to take it a piece at a time, build out the things that you like and can grok first, but it's all there on, on how to use formulas. It's also uh, lots of great docs on Salt Package Manager. 
Also very, very, very good docs. Okay? So I first heard about Cookie Cutter uh, last year at SaltConf 16 from the VirtuStream guys. They're part of the EMC Federation. And uh, I really was excited to go to their talk. I went to, uh, I think they had three different talks last year on it. They, uh, they talked about how they were, had 140 plus formulas written with, with, uh, with Team City and their automation system as their build system, and they were using Debian packages to distribute those wherever they needed them to go. Uh, and they talked about wrapper formulas, which was a pretty cool idea, and that is that you can take your, you can take a package and specify its dependencies, and that's really easy to do with any regular package manager, and then just have those all get built um, or delivered to the salt master when you install the, the top level one. There's their, uh, there's their conference video from last year. So immediately I went to the internet and said, well, who's got a cookie cutter? Because I don't know what cookie cutter is. And I found uh, two and picked to use this one from, uh, this is from MIT. Uh, really grateful for awesome people willing to share. Uh, that's the one that, uh, we've just made a couple, I've just made a couple of small changes to that formula in order to get Salt Package Manager to work. But other than that, everything was already there and present. So a salt package is a salt formula that's wrapped up in a zip file, or a, it's not a zip file, it's a BZ2, or it's a TGZ, whatever that is, whatever that actually stands for, right? A salt, it's a, just a salt formula that's wrapped up nice and pretty in its own package, okay? Uh, it can be deployed anywhere salt can be deployed because it, it just, excuse me, it just runs right with Python. Um, and then in order to take an existing formula from the SaltStack formulas organization that's been around a while and turn it into a salt package, all you really need to do is add the formula file. The formula file has the contents and the rules that tell the package manager what to do. Okay? There are three major systems in salt package manager, and we saw these earlier today, or, or, or sorry, earlier in the that image, there's a packaging system, which is gonna be an SPM build. You can run this from any minion, any of them, they all have it. Uh, there's the repo system. Again, you can run any of, you can run SPM create repo from any minion as well. Then uh, there's the salt master where you're actually gonna do the installation. Okay? So what SPM build does is makes your zip file, your package, what SPM create repo does is lays out the flat file system and the file structure for uh, the packages that are present. And then the SPM install obviously is gonna take that package and stick it on your master. And you'll need to do a little configuration and I'll show that to you later. So our flow is, for developer workflow, is to start with a formula that you build from a cookie cutter template and which is just Python. You start with a formula that you build from a template, then you make your changes to it, commit it to Git, push it to Bitbucket, or wherever your repos are hosted. Then uh, you can do the packaging on Team City. Just run a regular build that does the packaging, and then uh, you can actually have Team City run tests for you. You can also, with Vagrant, you can also do uh, other tests, and I'm excited to see uh, Daniel will talk about that, and some other talks are also talking about formulas. Hope you'll be at those. Um, so you can do other kinds of testing besides just Vagrant testing. Vagrant's great also for doing your development work up front. So it kind of sticks in two spots. And then you're gonna push those formulas to Artifactory. Since it's just a flat repository, um, a flat file system, the, once you've run the create repo command, you can really push that anywhere you want. Anywhere you can host that from, it'll work. It's really cool, really flexible. So steps one through three are for the formula specifically, and steps four through six, you could skip by using GitFS. Um, but you don't have to. You can, do them, you can use your build system to do all those things for you for making your opinionated system. Okay, just check and see where I'm at. Should have about a slide a minute, right? 
Okay, I'm going a little fast. So then uh, once you've got your packages on Artifactory, you're going to deploy them out to your different salt masters. Your repo system is Artifactory. Your packaging system up here is uh, Team City. Okay. Any questions so far? Yeah. If you just have, you know, a salt master or two salt masters, is there still a, a legitimate reason to do it this way? Do you have any thoughts on that? Sure. We we have two salt masters. So the the question was, I get that question was in there. The question was, if you have only a couple salt masters, is it really that useful to uh, to, to do formulas and do this whole distributed development thing? And and I think, I think the answer is yes. For our case, we, we do have a couple. Um, and I pull over stuff from one salt master to the other salt master quite regularly. Usually, it's because uh, the one system is a production system, so it's got all the security stuff in it. And the other system is the build system, and it's behind the firewall, and nobody, nobody pays attention to that stuff, right? So it's, it's great to be able to pull over those things and, and reuse them across. Uh, Across both. Yeah? Uh, so, would you discuss for this version of the CPC the same platform to start with with the cases and all the things that the CPC calls the services of the same cases? So, this is how I start to discuss the version of the CPC that I want. Right. Great question. So, uh, to repeat that, that is the what is the advantage to using packages instead of using GitFS where you can see exactly which version every, uh, every master is on? Uh, every pack, every formula in every master is on. Um, I think it's just preference, really. But but I would think, say an advantage is, and this is something that the virtual stream guys talked about, was that um, it allows people to stay off your salt masters because you don't get on there to modify your code as much, right? And when it's running in packages, in order to get your changes back into the normal flow of things, you're going to have to go, you're going to pull them off, SCP them off somewhere else so that you can get them back in your repository and do that. So I think when you have the multi-master and you don't want people on your salt masters very much, I think it becomes really powerful. Yeah? The question was, so can salt master only keep one pack version of a package, of a formula at any time? I believe the answer to that question is yes. Um, yeah, yeah. Right now, that's that's the answer. Um, have I run into the scenario where we actually have different packages, depending on the same on different versions of this of the same shared package? And for us, no. Our environment just isn't that big, right? Um, but I could see that happening. And I know I've talked on GitHub about, well, how do the dependencies work and the numbering, and how do you make sure that, uh, uh, well, I only need, I don't want to go to the latest version of this package. I only want to use version Y. You know, and that stuff is in there or planned to be in there. Great questions. I'll show that to you uh, later on. It gets, there's a folder called, by convention, SRV, SPM, SALT, and right there at the bottom. And I'll show that to you a little later. Okay. So getting started, you'll uh, forgive me for my Windows PowerShell skills. I've been uh, doing PowerShell for a long time. I really love it. It really is powerful. But anyway, so if you're on PowerShell, you're on Windows until very recently. And just make sure you have Python installed. Uh, make sure that you install cookie cutter with pip. Uh, I'm also not really a Python developer, so uh, I had a little um, a little disconnect about, well, how do I actually get cookie cutter? <laughs> oh, pip is the thing you use to get cookie cutter. I had to really think about that for a second, a minute or two, or maybe longer. I'll, I'll never tell. 
Uh, and then uh, after that, you just run cookie cutter. It just makes an executable on your machine. Then you can, uh, down, you can say cookie cutter and then your path to your formula, your cookie cutter template for formulas, and then you'll answer a bunch of questions. Here are all the questions. So you can see those. They're all, uh, they all have defaults. So you could just hit enter all the way through them and you'd get a great formula that works for MIT and has an MIT license and has a, uh, for the owner is Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Or you could switch to, uh, you could just change this, sorry, whoops. Change this parameter here and uh, you know, then it'll give you a salt stack formulas license the way that salt stack formulas does. It's really nice stuff. Um, the guy's name is Tobias Macy that uh, put this out there for MIT goes by Blarg Matey. And I'm really happy that I didn't have to build all this from scratch. Really grateful for, for that. The only thing that, uh, the for, that this says is if you're going to share it with other people in the license is that you make sure that you let them know that you're sharing it. Right? So I had a great talk with him last week. So yeah, all these just very basic questions. You could see these, this stuff down here is for helping you decide uh, how you're gonna test your formula. You can do multi, which will set up a couple of um, these operating systems for you, and you can run your tests against all of them. You just, when you do your vagrant up, you're gonna get all those machines set up for you. And you know this stuff goes in the formula file specifically, what, just metadata for that. Really, really cool stuff. Just answer the questions, and there you go. You have a basic formula. This is what it looks like when it's, once it's been created, once you've answered all the questions. You get the formula file, which is what Salt Package Manager needs. You get your license files, readmes, get your vagrant file in here. Inside here is where all your state data goes. Your Apache folder here. All your states and everything goes in there. That, that has a substructure with files and templates and Great stuff, it's really, really good stuff. All the, all, the best, all the conventions that came from the salt docs are in there, as far as I know. Um, yeah, it's really all there. And here's where your tests go. Uh, this formula, or sorry, this template uses cookie cutter, I'm sorry, uses PyTest, so you can take advantage of that too. PyTests are, yeah, they're, they're unit tests, but they don't really feel like unit tests too much <laughs> because you have to run the whole formula. You have to do the whole vagrant up before and all the provisioning happens, and at the end, then your tests run. So it can take a while. Yeah, yeah, integration tests. But works. Okay. Here's what your formula file looks like. Uh, these top bunch of things above top level dir are all um, defaults, important things you should have. These recommended and dependencies you can add if you need them. You just add CSV lists in here. And to add on to the question about versioning, I believe how it's supposed to work is that you can do a greater than, less than in here, just normal Python, pip packages syntax, and determine what version of the formula that you want. I haven't actually tested that. Like I said, we're just happy to have all this stuff work through the system. It's great. Now, uh, obviously, if you've got these set up in here, you're gonna need to configure something that says, where do I go get these? And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay. Oh, I, uh, I have a note in here to add that the salt documentation for the formula file got a lot longer with 2017.7. So it, there's a lot more new features and a lot more control that you can add over there. You can spe specify files and say, I only want these packages to end up in, these files to end up in my package. And you can even give them types. Say, I want it to end up over here when it's done. Really, really neat stuff. Yeah? When you get results, you usually have branches. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
Yeah, so the question was, how do you control branching with these packages and make sure that when you're doing uh, a, new, a new thing in your formula off to the side that you do that in a safe way that doesn't affect your normal production system or your testing or different environments. Again, it's a question I have too <laughs> because our environments are, you have one that's production and we have one that's the build and we don't have a lot of other environments in there. We, that's part of the plan and that's, we're using formulas to help us get to that part of the plan. So totally on that path, I'm gonna figure it out. Yeah. The uh, branching in the get remotes masks its own environments. Yeah. So if you have your team sitting here, whatever you use as the PI to build a branch out, and it's worth saying you have to build all the other formulas in that workspace into that environment, and then it'll automatically pull that branch to the matching uh, name of the environment. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, but at that point you don't have access to the batches, so how do you specify how you install the batching package on the feature class? Yep. That is produced from a feature class. It's just it's the package in the class is just the GG file in the Yeah. It's 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 a great question and the, the workflow there, you could do that. You could make it you could take your branch and you could make all of your formulas happen on that branch and then you could package them and do it that way, I suppose. You could just have a wrapper package that says for production, I want to specify where you take this formula file and then you say down here, all of, you have your change this name from Apache to wrapper or something like that, environment equals production or something. And then you put all of these, all of your dependent packages in here in the list. And you can install that one package which installs all the other packages then you just change that for what you're doing. Change the ones you need for what you're doing. Was there another, I saw another hand. Yeah, um, so are all of these build examples or do you make formulas that also reinforce things uh, for other modules as well? Can you make, so the question was, can you make other formulas besides just states uh, into packages? And the answer is yes. I don't have any examples of that, but I know you can do reactor formulas in there, and instead of your formula being named dash formula, you name it dash reactor at the end. There's conventions for it in the documentation. You guys want to add anything to that? Yep, you're loading up uh, SPM, SRV SPM salt is just a new file route, just like SRV salt. So your package can put things in there, puts everything in there, and then it, it all works just like a normal file route. Yeah? Is it better for your module to have a separate package and then have your state module depend on the package? Hmm. That's a great question. Is it better to do state packages and have your modules be packaged separately and depend on those? I really don't know. I think it, it all works pretty fast, and I can't imagine why you wouldn't do that. If that's the point of writing the module, right, is to take advantage of that custom development and in, in multiple places. Seems totally reasonable. Other questions? You guys are awesome. Glad you're thinking about it. Okay, so Git just works. I thought I'd need to, I, this was me initially trying to get this working. I initially pulled this uh, cookie cutter down a year ago and had to do the Git initialization myself and then when I uh, updated last week, it all just, it's already there. It just works. So if you, uh, as soon as you run your cookie cutter package, you're automatically gonna get a Git repo, repo out of it if, you're, if, you're, uh, if you have Git installed and it does all this stuff for you. Then you just push it wherever you need to go. So you can use whatever system you want for hosting your packages for a long time. Or when we were first getting started with Git, we just hosted them on a Linux server and just SSH to them and, and pulled them down. 
Then we got uh, Bitbucket because the number of repositories grows immensely when you decide you're going to do small formulas for small units of work and, uh, and microservices. And if we took our monolith and did all the things in its own repos, we just, it's a lot of repositories. So highly recommended if you've got a, a lot of different small things that you're gonna put together. Remember, VirtuStream guys were saying they had 140 formulas. 140 formulas and a formula in repo is one-to-one -one relationship, just a lot of stuff there. Uh, let's also let you think about access rules and naming conventions and uh, just do smart stuff. So for Team City, I thought I'd detail these a little bit more. I've been a Team City user since uh, 2008 or 2009, like almost 10 years now. I, I love it and have brought it with me to my current role. Uh, and this is another thing that the VirtuStream guys pointed out but didn't show. They had just said, well, you just take a Team City template and uh, build it out with the stuff that you need and, and then do it. So I thought I'd actually show what that looks like. Uh, for those familiar with Team City, for those familiar with other build systems, I'm sure the same concept exists, where you need a template that has a bunch of parameters in it, and when you make a new configuration, you just change the parameters, and everything else works. Okay, so we have a parameterized VCS route, a few build steps, a trigger, some build features and parameters. And also, uh, because we're using Artifactory, I took advantage of the Artifactory plugin for Team City, which is free. And it really makes the flat file system thing work well, okay? So uh, first, the build features. I think these are the most powerful parts of the whole thing. You have a file content replacer because every time you make a package, you're gonna change the version number in it. So that's just gonna clean that up for you and, and automatically set the number every time you change the package. Uh, a build file is cleaner to make sure you don't get any junk in there. Of course, you can now be more explicit with files with the file spec and make sure you only get what you want. Uh, shared resources, uh, this will become clear, but what I, what, what I did, rather than try and write some kind of artifactory plugin which I still want to do because it'd be faster. What I did was just pull down the file system from Artifactory, then make a new metadata file, push it back with the, with the changed formula. So in order to do that, make that work with different builds going on, you need to have a shared resource lock so you only do one at a time so you don't mess up your metadata file, right? So because it's just a flat file system, you can do that, but the cost is it's a little bit slower. But it works. You don't have to you don't have to buy anything new. Um, then you have a commit status publisher because obviously you don't want to push packages that fail to build. Okay. We use a feature branch workflow also, so it it's a, really is a valid question, how do you work with these different things and test them in feature branches? What you do is you test the package individually and make sure it works in your feature branch, and then if it has dependent packages, you add those in Team City to build to rebuild with the change package and you make it work that way. At least that's what we're doing, okay? So we download the current repository here. That command is just, this is just a wrapper thing, but SPM, oh sorry, this actually runs first. This part from Artifactory gets the dependencies. So we just go to our repository, download the whole thing into a folder. Then we uh, make a repository based on that folder make a package repository. Then um, in your second build step, you're gonna build your new package. By default, that's gonna go to, sorry, this is, you can't see the checkout rule here, but you're just in the folder where you've checked out your formula. You just issue SPM build formula name then you're gonna move that formula into the collection of formulas, right? Then after that, you're just gonna run your create repo command again on your downloaded folder, and that'll make the new metadata file. Then you can just push up the stuff you know changed, which is the metadata file itself, and the package name that you just built with the build number you just used, right? And I actually put this whole template in, uh, in a Git repository on GitHub, just so all the stuff is there. 
and you can just see it as XML if that's, that's easier. And that's pretty much it. That's how that connects to Artifactory. You just, anywhere with a, with a minion, the one thing you do have to be sure about is that your minion and your um, Team City agent run with the same permissions or have access to run with the same permissions. Your, this SPM build usually runs as root, so you need to find a way to get to root if that's not the one your Team City agent runs as. Okay? Any questions on that so far? Yeah. I think Daniel's saying no. That's, that's good. I'm excited to have him here. Okay. Uh, your VCS root's really easy. You just have a package name. Uh, your parameters are really easy too. You just, for formula packages, you just do package name dash formula and then all you have to fill out when you start up your new build for your new repo and formula is just what your package name is. And if you were gonna do a reactor formula, you just set it up there. Okay, yeah, all pretty easy stuff. Just trigger on any changes. Then you're gonna spin up Vagrant. We're actually not doing this in Team City yet. We have had trouble with the boxes, with, with running the, so you need physical boxes to run your Vagrant environment so that you can run your Vagrant plus virtual inbox. So you need a physical box to do that on because you can't run it inside the a thing that's already virtual. So we have some old desktops that we took to, to do that with. It's not great, but it's okay. Vagrant is really awesome. You guys already know all about Vagrant. Um, for, those that, for those that don't, here, there's some great thoughts here. It works with a lot of providers. Uh, I used VirtualBox for a long time first. VirtualBox on Windows really only works with Sigwin. It's okay with PowerShell, but it's not great. Really works with Sigwin. Um, Hyper-V works. Uh, different, uh, there's trade-offs. Uh, but it lets you do all of your testing. Like I said here, this uses, the cookie cutter template uses PyTest. So you're gonna run virtual up and your provi or Vagrant up with your provider, and at, it's gonna run through your whole state. At the end, it's gonna test it, and it's gonna just say pass or fail, right? Um, or pass, fail, retry, and then when you're gonna, when you're working on it, you're gonna do Vagrant up with dash dash provision a lot <laughs> while you're working on getting things working how they're supposed to. Okay. And uh, yeah, more stuff on Vagrant. There's lots of great base boxes you can use. Of course, you can build your own box on top of one of these base boxes or build your own from scratch. Um, but uh, my customizations were just in here, just supporting downloading dependencies from your salt package repository inside Vagrant. And it works with basic auth if your repository needs auth. This is not great, but it's okay. It works. And uh, I've got these uh, in a pull request right now. My customizations are in a pull request against the main repo. But they're also in our fork, which is uh, Spillman Tech. And I'll show that to you at the end here. Then you just, in, in Artifactory, you're gonna make a simple new repository, generic layout. If you do this file layout thing over here, first you get some more stuff for free from Artifactory, uh, tracking modules and, and version numbers. The other thing you can do with, uh, if you're working on a feature and you don't want it to be part of your main rev is you can just change the version number. Right? Change the version, the major version number, and then say, well, I don't want that version number when I'm using that package. Right? And then uh, at the very end, after you've gotten that in Artifactory, then you can set up your salt master. I thought I'd show you that. Uh, real quick. I got about five minutes left. Oops. So here's that repo that I was telling you about. Just some really simple stuff in there so far. I'll add stuff to it as we go. But inside your, uh, on your salt master, in order to get your artifactory repo configured, you're gonna add your, add a, con a configuration file inside spm.repos.d. Let me do that, make that bigger. And it just has to have the URL. That's it. As long as the metadata file is there, it works. And the packages are there, obviously. It, it all works great. 
and inside your salt master, you're going to make sure that you have your file roots set and, and you're good to go. Yeah. 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 Uh, with, the, with the .d format, I assume you can have them and even have them in, boy, that's embarrassing, right? You can even have them in, uh, in different files and configure them all that way with file.manage and everything. Works great. Yeah. When did the PyTest run? When did the PyTest run? At the very end, after all the states are run. So in the, in the Vagrant set, right? Yeah. So yeah. Calls them? Vagrant actually calls them. The, in the Vagrant file, we call Yep. In the Vagrant file, there's a shell provisioner at the very end that just runs test infra and then runs your test for you. And that Vagrant file changes the cookie cutter Yeah. Yeah, it's all in the cookie cutter. <laughs> yeah. Test Test for is the best. It's good stuff. And then uh, after that, you're just going to do, you know, SPM install Apache with your formula, and you're done. And then you go run it, and it works. It's good stuff. Okay, that's all my slides. So what questions do you guys have? Okay. Okay, the question was, how do you deal with salt version incompatibilities with your formula, how they know which ones they're supposed to be on? And you know, I don't actually know the answer to that question. But uh, it's a great question. <laughs> and it should be asked, because it does happen, doesn't it? Right? Yeah. I think you're going to have to do that by hand in your wrapper formula file. Just say, well, don't use that newer one yet. Can't use that. Yeah, Vager can do that too. <laughs> Sweet. Yep. Is that in the file doc, in the formula doc already? Yeah. Cool. Sweet. So the guts are there. Yeah, great point. You, you can still take these and put them in, in Debian packages or your other package, any other package manager. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This one? Oh, not this one. It was that one, right? Yeah. Okay, question in the back. Uh huh. Yeah, we have that. We have that very problem, and I think again the same way that you could do with a custom module, you can put that pillar data in its own formula. Then you depend on that formula in your formula. So if ever, say you have, you know, in production environment formula has all the pillar data in it. You install that formula, it goes in the pillar just like it should, and then your other formula gets installed, just uses it on top of that. Yeah. The question was, have I explored kitchen salt? And the answer is no, but I know about it. And I know that uh, they're going to talk about how you can do testing without even using it. <laughs> tomorrow at 1.45. So look for that if you're interested to see a, a more on the plus and minuses of it. Okay, uh, I think my time's up, but if there's, a, if there's one more question, I'll take one more. Okay. Uh, the question was, should, it, should they really be one-to-one -one if you had a bunch of formulas that existed already? Uh, I think the answer is the vagrant stuff isn't going to work, right? You'd have to configure that custom to, to work, but everything else will work just fine. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, guys.